Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, uh, how to use the data interoperability extension and, uh, and, and attach it actually to a toolbox so I can rerun it. I'm going to actually access a GeoRSS feed of um, BGS earthquakes um, and uh, it, and that's that's some data I've used in previous videos, particularly on with QGIS and things like that. And I was just going to continue some of that, that earthquake data, but within the ArcGIS Pro environment. So I thought I'd start off actually by introducing the data for future um, <clears throat> future demos and by using that extension, the interoperability extension. Uh, so, uh, that's an additional license that I'm going to be using. And uh, it's it's something that you um, uh, do, do pay for uh, as, as an extra um, extension cost. So let's get into it. So using the extension, the, what, what we can do is uh, you can kind of just um, r r use something like FME and, and, and pull in the um, workbench etc but actually it is it is FME that you're 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 bringing in anyway um, or a cut, sort of cut down version of it and you can um, just sort of run that, all of that outside of ArcGIS or within ArcGIS you can get on with with a, a an FB, FME workbench session so I am going to be using FME that's that is the interoperability extension that's really what it is and when you um, click on toolboxes so I got that just from uh, what is it view uh, catalog pane so you can go to the, um, the, the my um, toolbox or whatever it's called because I want to add it to this project the tools within this project and I'll say new spatial ETL tool so um, it, it, it's a spatial ETL tool which like I said is FME you can see the icon there um, so I'll just click on that so we're going to be bringing in the um, GeoRSS feed. So I think we'll, we'll change the label, GeoRSS, um, BGS, the clicks. So we'll sort of call that the um, label. I'll just leave the name as is. As is. And I'm going to import the FMW, um, the FME workbench rather than going off to something that already exists so as soon as you do that it then at some point there we go um, brings up the interoperability extension try saying that quickly and it's actually appeared on, on my other monitor but but this is what the um, first steps are so this isn't an FME uh, uh, tutorial uh, this is just to use, very, very quickly use the ETL. So there's lots of parameters, lots of things you can do, but I'm just going to go sort of straight into it, really. So it's a GeoRSS feed. If it's not listed in there, I've done it before, that's why it's listed at the top, but you go to More Formats. And as you can see, there's a whole list of um, uh, different formats to read. So these are all readers from the reader gallery. That's what it says up there. And it's GeoRSS, so we can just um, I don't know, type in RSS, for example, and up it pops there. So it's GeoRSS, and that goes in there. So what's the data set? Well, I've copied and pasted the uh, XML reference, the, the, the URL that I need for my GeoRSS. And what do I want to write it as? I want to write it to Esri Shapefile. But again, if you went to more formats, there's a whole load here for the right from the writer gallery. These are writer. Um, um, uh, th th these are different outputs um, types for the writer. There's a, there's a lot in there. Some may need additional licensing, um, but there's a lot um, in there by default, or some may be uh, deprecated or something. Anyway, I'm just going to write a shapefile. So there it is. There's your shapefile. And then there's, there's other parameters. So we'll leave all the coordinate system and etc. etc. So press OK. And then I'll just bring in from my other monitor this window. So I'm going to be bringing in, um, it's just the ent uh, just entry for that particular feed. I'm not going to process the whole lot. 
and um, uh, so I'm going to click on that press OK and it builds automatically the workbench for you like I said I'm, I'm not going to go into the FME workbench itself here there's there's a million and one options uh, that are available to you but I mean well, a million and one thousand and one uh, but a lot more even when you've got the full um, sort of FME uh, uh, application the I mean the only thing I, I, I'd note maybe if, if if you wanted to change is the fact that uh, I know earthquakes are a point and by default it puts in a geometry filter so it brings out other uh, geometry types line polygon as well uh, but but, uh, but you, you probably an, an collection type and, and indeed null objects but you could delete all these and just keep to entry point um, or it's called entry because that's the name there that is given um, that it read so it thinks okay I'll call it entry and then put the word point after it because I'm um, sort of writing a point um, but there's this um, but you can just leave it as default and um, and, and that's it and then we can simply exit and it's in there so I didn't I didn't make many change I didn't make any changes to the FME workbench I could have done perhaps a bit of error checking type stuff I don't really want null geometry coming through for example and I'll probably get the odd warning or two but in here but it doesn't doesn't really matter but we, we should get some dots on the map from the GRSS feed by running this tool so I'll double click on it and you can see that what it's done is it brings up a very standard sort of geoprocessing type toolbox um, and it is asking me where I'd like to write that um, I'll just put it in C temp um, where I'd like the Esri shapefile be but I, I could have defaulted that to a value in the FME workbench like I said I didn't make any real edits on that so I just run <coughs> I run now so um, it's added in the toolbox so therefore when I save my project it'll be part of it yeah there's a few warnings that's expected like I said I, I didn't go through all the um, FME settings I could have forced the coordinate system I could have got rid of any null geometry tests or sort of thing and just made it only um, a 2d point file um, but but that's sort of neither here nor there so what's happened well it doesn't hasn't added it to the map um, but if we go to um, the map and add data and if we look on C temp we will see this thing called entry point and click OK and there's all the um, all the data from the GRS S feed when I click there it is it's the link URI where it came from and all the general data so so it's in there as a shapefile now um, it's you can do what you like with it these are earthquakes in the UK um, I think they're up to 30 days old or something like that the sort of last 30 days it's something like that um, oh, there's a little cluster down there it's full um, Leighton Buzzard it's not quite central it's, that's just uh, yesterday magnitude 3 um, yeah so that's all that's that's all I'm gonna really gonna show you on that this is a quick hit intro just to use um, the data interoperability extension uh, just clarify its FME to you and um, and I've added it to the toolbox as you can see I've got a nice um, tool entry there got properties and I can update it I can rename it um, and, um, and, and and it's there for me to run at will it's a standard tool you can do what you like with it and um, and, and it's pulled into the project itself and and, and like I said it's a it's an FME FMW um, dot fmw file extension and with the data operability extension you can uh, read and write in a whole in a vast number of formats but it is an additional license anyway i hope that is useful thank you